What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Heavy Ranch. Today we're working on a T300 Bobcat doing a cylinder. One of the boom cylinders. I've already got my crane hooked up to the upper piece, the safety locks on the other side. And we're going to go with, um, that safety lock's important um, on the other side over there. But So it locks it mechanically on the other side from here to here on the other side. And it's normally stored right here. So anyway, use that. We'll be good to go and uh, I got, also got my crane hooked up to it just as a secondary precaution. Um, it's always better to do it that way. So let's uh, pull this, clean this up and we'll get this off because uh, we're doing a Bobcat cylinder and we're going to get after it. So seal kit's here so we're going get to get it done. Let's get into it. I'm going to start cleaning it off. Again. One of my favorite tools is the blow gun and the aspirator. Blow gun first. Aspirator second. one and I also have another one that I picked up at an auction sale so let's um let's go get that tool all right here's the one I picked up from the auction sale it's just a regular old Y style spanner um it actually looks like it's gonna work yeah it's real close I mean that's pretty we'll try this out first tap it down in the holes there Give her a go. Nope. Not gonna hold. Okay. This is the Matco. I'm sure it's rebranded. Matco, whatever. Probably rebranded. Part number VPS 661-3A. Variable spanner wrench set. Um, I guarantee it's rebranded by somebody. I don't know who, but this is actually the Nissan Toyota Nissan Cam Tool. Um, <laughs> and I bought it for this part. Uh, it does have adjustable dowels, so you can put in whatever size dowel pin you need. And uh, oh, that one, mm, that one's a little big. So it's got a whole bunch of different dowels you can use, and you thread them in. And what you want to do. Is you want to pull on this part, I believe, is how it's worked best in the past. Um, these screw right in. Go from here. Set one dowel, set the other dowel. Now let's see if we can break this loose. Oh, she tight. It is an aluminum head gland. In a steel body, we may be in trouble, but we'll find out here in a minute. Sometimes, it does not seem to be working. All right, let's step up the pin size because I think I can get the other pins in there tough when they put aluminum on them. This might be a lost cause today. You might have heat. You might have to do all sorts of stuff. Did I turn on my microphone? Yeah, I did. Good. Good deal. So this one's a little bit big, but... I'm going to go grab a, a 
match it for that. And I'll be right back. Sometimes you can take it, smack the cylinder just like that. I don't know if you've seen what I did, but I put pressure on it, smacked the cylinder, and that popped it free. Now we can pop this out. There you go. Well, you probably can go back to this one because it's nice and free. It is. Okay, now I like breaking this nut loose um, while it's still all connected because that holds it steady. Now that it's loose, we can work with it, you know? Um, so now we'll take these, they got a rubber hose protector here. Make sure we put that back on for them. And, uh, Tell you what, I've been grabbing these Nipex um, wrench players more and more every time. Um, just because they uh, they work phenomenal. And they get in there. Now this one they probably won't work because I just said something nice about them. You know how that goes. Sometimes you can tighten a hose and then loosen it. It makes it better. Um, we're also going to need a drain pan underneath this beast. And then I'll need to grab a 7 8 uh, and 15 16 for this size. This one here. You always want to be careful. I do like to wear gloves when I'm taking off hydraulic lines because of high pressure oil, that glove gives you an extra little barrier. I mean, it just makes me feel better, I guess, about it. So now we have the side that's really got no, um, shouldn't have any pressure on it. Seven eighths. That. Oh, 16 sixteenths maybe. Seven eighths on the bottom. If you remember from my one video, this is that same Matco wrench that I made for a uh, special tool. Fifteen sixteenths. Oh, I love it when they do that. Just love it. Over tighten like crazy. Pinch, smack with a hammer, and they come free. Because the worst part is you're going to over tighten it like that, you, know, you bend that too. So now, I'm going to get this out. I hope these videos are doing better and better, you know, because I hope people are liking them more repair videos. Feels like there's, shouldn't be any pressure on that. Someone's loose. Ah, oh, drain can. Put that right there. Nice part is you don't have to mark these hoses because they're, uh, Actually, one's a male, one's a female, so that's pretty nice. Okay, I'll take this one, and we'll just work this off the rest of the way. Not for any other reason besides it's kind of uh, nice to, like I said, have that other end held for you.
now we're past that seal, that o-ring on the outside of the gland. We're moving along. It takes a while to do these cylinders, so I'm going to get this out, and then I'll probably pull the bolt on the pin. You don't care about that, and then uh, knock that pin out, and we'll go from there, and I'll get the rod out. So be back in a minute, or actually, I'll be back right now. Pulled the bolt out, got the head gland out. Pins out. You know, way nicer than I thought it would, to tell you the truth. Now let's see if we can get this rod out without getting it. Too crazy, which we can. Oh, oh, there goes that. Rod's out. There we go. Get her in the vise. We'll go from there. Now we've got our rod mounted up in the vise. I like this uh, other piece. I've just mounted it down, ratchet strap to a block of wood, so that way we don't hammer it. Uh, I got the socket, three-quarter drive on a half inch. Milwaukee, we have two bars of power on this thing. So we're going to see if two bars will take that nut off. No. So let's get a new battery and see if the battery matters. So you know, here's the two bars. Full charge. I mean, I like testing stuff out, seeing what happens, you know. We're on three. See if the three quarter air get out the air. Be right back with the uh, old faithful IR three quarter big airline. See what happens. I wonder what the foot pound torque rating is on this old girl compared to that electric. Hmm. Air still has its advantages. Piston. Piston actually looks okay. Um, it comes with, it doesn't come with a piston seal, I don't believe. Maybe it does. Here's a, this might be the piston seal. So we'll double check that. But I don't, it, I don't think the, well, the wipers, they don't um, get replaced. Sometimes you have to buy the whole piston. And that's kind of how it looks on this one. So, anyway. Spacer, there's no taper. Head gland. And the reason she's leaking, we have a split seal there. And more than likely, yeah, just in there, them seals. So let's get after these and get them replaced. I'll clean this off real quick and then we'll uh, go from there. Back in a second. All right. So we have an O-ring, backup ring. Put them over there. O-ring for the head gland seal here. Set that over there. We have our wiper seal that's broken half. Then we have our 
internal rod seal right there. Now grab some brake clean, hone that up a little bit. Hone it, yeah. There you go. The pre-clean, the pre-clean and all that stuff is, is uh, you know, nice to do. And then you can always spray it off with brake clean. Then a little bit of dirt right there. They're all cleaned up. Okay, sounds good. Now, new seals. This one. Oh, let me go grab my seal installers. All right, like I said on my last, uh, I know I keep pulling myself out of frame here, uh, seal twister kit. Amazon, I don't know, they're really nice. Should probably put a link in the description, I'm, I Amazon affiliate link there. Um, so I do have an Amazon affiliate link. So I'll try to put these in there, see if I can't do that. Figure out how that works, I don't know. That way you can do it and I should probably be like the standard YouTuber link in the description below but I don't know if it's gonna be there or not so this is the seal tool works really well and you put it in there like this I believe nope I lied like this so the single post goes on the outside two posts go to the inside and it makes that seal look like a kidney bean now this seal is a little bit better to show you with than the last uh, John Deere cylinder. But here's how I put it in. You slide it in, one side, two sides, put it up to the top. And then maybe I'll show you from this side if you can see that. So see how it goes in? And then when this comes around, it pops out and you shove it down. And that's literally it. And that's a sweet little tool. Um, for years and years and years I've used you know those pliers and fought it with my hands and yada yada which you can do it with your hands you just gotta work it in like that and then uh, well here I'll try to do it so I use my two fingers get one down get that up and then there it is so that's installed now let's go to our outer rings and we have a brown seal. This one was on the head gland all the way at the end like your dirt your dirt seal I would call it. So that one's really not gonna you don't want that one to stop the oil. The other thing I like doing is taking my pick if, so that way you don't twist the o-ring and uh, just run around a couple times and that's the hook pick um, yeah and then we had our backup ring right here slide that on and then we have two different o-rings we have a smaller o-ring and a bigger o-ring and I bet you that's for the piston and then this bigger o-ring was on the head gland right here no. Let's see what size that was. Let's look here. Let's see what we got going on. It might be the smaller o ring. Or do we have the wrong kit? Or. This one that's. Yep, that's what it is. I put the wrong one in the wrong spot. Gentlemen and ladies, whoever's watching this. Uh-oh. Yep, that one goes there. This one goes around the outer. This is the dirt seal. Screwed the old pooch on that one, didn't I, almost? But that's why you look. That's why you double check. So now our head gland is done. We're going to lube this up and then we'll go from there. Get on the rod.
As always, a little grease or assembly lube. The grease was closer today, regular old grease, as long as it's clean. Okay, slide that on. There we go. Set that there. That goes on there. Goes on there. Just never had any luck without with that sucking back together. All right, new nut. So it comes with a new nut. But that's lock tighted, so we're gonna clean this off. And the new nut comes preloaded with yellow Loctite. I don't know if you can see that or not. So that's probably why we needed the three quarter. To do it, we'll brake clean, let her dry for a second. Get this tight. Oh, all right. The old Bertha out. Now we can go back to reassembly. All right, I'll get this off of here. Get her back in the, I'll turn you around and we'll get you back to face the machine. Hold on. All right. Grease fitting goes down. I know what I didn't do. I didn't lube up the piston. Silly me. Give the piston a little lube too. There we go. And then we'll get our head gland here a little bit. Give it a fighting chance to come out again. There we go. <clears throat> Surf fitting went down right there. Keep that in mind when you're putting it back in. Line it up straight. Okay. Now, I like to get our pin lined up as soon as possible because if not, you're just going to pump freaking uh, you're just going to pump oil out of it. I need a step stool.
Okay, let's get a couple rags. Wipe off the streets. Nasty now. Cylinders aren't hard, they're just, uh, they can be, you know, and uh, they got a track adjuster to do on this one also, so. Watch me uh, drop the wrench ten times and tighten all that up. But I get that tightened up, I'll be back. All right, we got the hoses back on, cylinders all tight. We gotta get our pin the rest of the way in, and then uh, should I be a jerk? No, nah, I'm gonna go get my flush cuts. Um, <laughs> Make the walk. Go we'll get your flush cuts. Don't be a jerk. Don't be that guy. If you own them, might as well use them. They're freaking phenomenal. I'm, I'm a huge proponent now of uh, using flush cuts for zip ties. And, uh, you know, making that happen. So we got our pin back in, keeper bolt. Just a three eighths bolt. Down on there. They don't have to be crazy tight, they just gotta be tight. Um, it's a locking nut. So I will go grab my flush cuts, zip these off, and then that cylinder job is done. And uh, wrap up my tools here, and we'll go from there. And then we'll try to pop this track off. I'll show you how I do that. That's going to be an interesting uh, thing. I might do that in a separate video. So I guess I will do that in a separate video. So, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'm going to wrap up my tools. We should be good on this cylinder, on this T300 Bobcat. Uh, stay tuned for the next video on the T300 Bobcat. Removing the track, resealing the track adjuster. Stay tuned. We'll talk to you later. Uh, check out live streams. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. All that good stuff. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you!